Welcome to another review between 2023 Mercedes GLC versus Porsche Macon. But first let's start with Mercedes GLC. The favorite star 2.0 may be a halfway house to Mercedes Electric Future, but it moves the game on from the original GLC, where it matters. When a car manufacturer is on to a winner, aerodynamicists have lacquered the GLC's drag coefficient to a commendably low 0.29 a little longer and lower than the previous effort. The evolutionary package creates more rear legroom and a ginormous 620 liter boot, up 70 liters compared to last year's vintage. Thanks to the standard mild hybrid system that throws in an on-demand 17 kilowatts and 200 newton meters, kick in the butt good for about 15 seconds. Average fuel consumption improves from 8.0 L slash 100 km to 7.4 L slash 100 km. For a truly dramatic cut in on-paper thirst, you must wait for the plugins that promise a token 0.5 L slash 100 km, but will deliver only while the battery charge lasts. Even when shod with 20-inch wheels, the air suspension acts as an adaptive eider-down dispensing service that plugs every pothole, shaves every transverse ridge, and beats up every crumbling camber. Rolling a bit more than expected and making a curtsy under hard deceleration. Difficult to judge, but the autonomous future may not be quite as rosy as the industry would have us believe. Dialing in sport mode firms up the dampers a touch and speeds up the shifter inside. This is a proper Mercedes that blends trad luxury with the latest digital trickeries. The large upright main monitor is now easier to use thanks to the zero-layer approach, which prioritizes access to the user's favorite icons. Killing the nerdy warning lights, chimes and vibrations is now an easy-to-stab affair, no longer a lengthy submenu diving course. Inside, this is a proper Mercedes that blends trad luxury with the latest digital trickeries. By a similar measure, but there is still not even a whiff of AMG Ness to be felt at the wheel, which is okay, since the real things are yet to come. Standard equipment levels will be high, reflecting the fact that, globally, GLC customers have typically spent more on options than those buying C-Class sedans. Every new GLC comes equipped with, formatic, full-size MBUX display, ambient lighting, wireless mobile phone charging, a power tailgate, privacy glass, and heated front seats. The pricey full electronic Monty includes a large instrument panel with a choice of different graphics from dull to brash, a crowded head-up display and the driver's live view relayed to the in-dash screen complete with road sign projections, and directional satin AV arrows, welcome to overkill software wonderland. Surrounded by tall peaks and concealed behind unreal rock formations is a small designated off-road paradise where the GLC showed its eye-opening when Doomsday meets Armageddon talents. The midsize SUV is a relatively new vehicle category for Mercedes-Benz. The GLK launched in 2008 was the company's first foray into the segment. But with more than 2.6 million GLKs and GLCs sold worldwide since then, it's a segment to which Mercedes-Benz now pays close attention. Among the tech upgrades are a transparent bonnet feature, which comes as part of the optional 360-degree camera package, and shows a virtual view of what's almost under the front wheels when you select off-road mode. The NAV system includes a towing planner that calculates routes suitable for driving with trailers of specific weights, widths, and heights. The trailer's properties are defined via the trailer menu in MBUX, which is activated as soon as the trailer is coupled to the tow bar and an electrical connection made. The Porsche Macon, the best-selling SUV in the Stuttgart-based brand's portfolio, is still in its first generation. 
The first facelift was launched in 2018, and now Porsche presents the second update received by its smallest SUV. Among the exterior updates received by the Macan is a restyled front grille, LED headlights are now standard, daytime running lights have been repositioned, the front splitter is painted in body color, and the air intakes have been modified. The wheels are between 19 and 21 inches in diameter, and the color palette includes 14 shades. The cabin is now more airy. The physical buttons on the center tunnel have been replaced by tactile controls with haptic feedback. The steering wheel is derived from the one present on the 911, and the gear selector is slightly shorter. Regardless of the version chosen, the multimedia system, with navigation, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, has a 10.9-inch central display. More power for all versions in the range. All versions received more power, and the Macan Turbo disappeared, at least for the moment, from the range. The entry into the range is made with the Macan. In its case, the 2.0-liter turbo four-cylinder engine now develops 265 horsepower, 20 horsepower more than before. Furthermore, the Macan S ditches the 3.0-liter engine in favor of a 2.9-liter V6 capable of 380 horsepower, plus 26. The same unit also equips the Macan GTS facelift version, but the one behind the wheel has 440 horsepower, plus 60. The same power previously offered by the Macan Turbo. All-wheel drive and the 7-speed PDK transmission are standard regardless of the version chosen. Several aesthetic elements differentiate the Macan GTS from the other versions in the range. 21-inch black RS spider wheels, sport design side skirts, clear LED headlights, red painted calipers, and black exhaust tips are just a few of them.